Now we're going to take a look at the square of the reciprocal function. So this is another one that is probably a little bit tougher for most people. However, once you've got the reciprocal function, I think this one becomes a lot easier. You'll see a lot of similarities um, between these two, between the reciprocal and the square of the reciprocal. All right, so the equation is y equals one over x squared. And I like to call this one the volcano. And you'll see its shape really does remind you of a volcano, um, maybe with a little imagination needed. Okay, so let's jump in. Let's start our table of values. We'll see how negative one, zero, and one work. Okay, so negative one for x, we'll have, and I'll do our scratch work up here. We have one over negative one squared. Be sure you use parentheses when you substitute in a negative input. So the denominator becomes a positive one. So we have one over one or a y of one. Okay, this is where we see a similarity to the reciprocal function. When you substitute in zero, you end up with a denominator of zero, which we cannot have. So we have another um, output that is undefined. Zero is not a valid input. And that should already be making you think, hey, this is another one that's going to have an asymptote um, right there at x equals zero or on the y-axis. Okay, and if you want, you can even go ahead and put that on your graph um, just so you don't forget. Um, when you substitute in one, that's just one over one squared, so you've got a one. Let's go ahead and mark those points and an asymptote on our graph. Excuse me. So we have negative one, one. We have one, one. And we said we know there's an asymptote here when x is zero. So we'll go ahead and put that dotted line on there. And remember, an asymptote is just a dotted line and our graph will approach it, but will not touch it. Okay, you can never cross a vertical asymptote. Um, and think of it as a guide for how to draw your graph. So remember, if your graph approaches it, but never touches it, take advantage of the approaches part. So your graph should be approaching this line. Okay, um, just for this time, since we're developing this graph, let's substitute in a couple more x values. Um, so we'll start like we did with the reciprocal graph. Let's start with one half and with two. Okay, so if we substitute in one half, we have one over one half squared. So our denominator, when we square both of those, um, we end up with one over four. And then we have one divided by one fourth, which is four. When we substitute in two, we have one over two squared or one fourth. So let's plot these and see what's going on. So we have one half, one, two, three, four, and we have two, one fourth. So you can see this looks very similar to how the regular reciprocal graph looks in the first quadrant, um, but maybe just a little bit more um, exaggerated is maybe a good way to say it. Okay. Um, if you plugged in say three, and we won't put that in our table, but you can easily see if you substitute in three for X, you get a Y of one ninth. Okay. And no matter what X you plug in, you'll get a Y closer and closer and closer to zero, but you'll never quite get there. So that's our, our big clue that we have a horizontal asymptote here. Um, that our graph approaches but never touches. The horizontal asymptotes guide end behavior. Um, and you'll get more into that as you study these in more detail um, in future units. Okay, so we have that. And hopefully you can imagine a similar idea going on if you substitute in negative one half and negative two. Okay, just don't forget that you would need parentheses around the negatives when you input them. Be very careful if you're using a calculator for this. Okay, so you end up with four if you substitute in negative one half, and you end up with one fourth if you substitute in negative two, because anytime you square a negative, it becomes positive. All right, so we have a reflection of sorts going on over here. Okay, hopefully that's already making you have an idea about what kind of symmetry this graph has.
All right, um, I think we have plenty to go ahead and get a really good sketch here. So there's the curve in quadrant two. And there's the curve in quadrant one. So just like with the reciprocal, you probably don't need these point, all these points every single time. I think enough would probably be having negative one, 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 and of course your asymptotes. And hopefully you're seeing the volcano shape. So just a quick trace. You have your volcano, you have your fire spewing out, your lava. Okay, um, you can draw a fire if you want, um, but hopefully your illustration is a little bit better than mine. But it's nice to know, oh, this is a nice nickname for this function. I know exactly what it looks like. It's the one that has the exaggerated curves in first and second quadrant. So let's clear those off. And now we have a clean graph for our analysis. So our domain, we know we have that asymptote, that vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So our domain, listing all our possible x's, will have to exclude zero. And this is very similar, or it's the same as our domain for the reciprocal. So moving from left to right, you start with negative infinity and all the x's until you get to zero. And we'll use parentheses to close here because we don't want to include zero as one of our options. We'll use u for union because we have another interval that we need to include because all x's past zero till positive infinity are also valid for our domain. Okay, our range. So remember, this is our list of y values. We look from bottom to top. So this is where the square of the reciprocal differs and hopefully that makes logical sense because when we square x as we substitute it into this function, we shouldn't have any negatives. So there's nothing down here in quadrants three and four. There are no y values until we get above the y axis. So we'll wanna say from zero until infinity and we won't include zero because we know our graph is approaching that horizontal asymptote, but never touching it. So we'll say with parentheses from zero to infinity, those are all our possible y's. All right, we see clearly there are no intercepts here, no x-intercepts, no y-intercepts. That was the same with our regular reciprocal graph as well. And it's because of those asymptotes. And now let's look closer at the symmetry. So as you were sketching this, hopefully you were seeing that mirror reflection over the y-axis. Um, that's your huge clue that you have y-axis symmetry. Okay. Um, other indicators, you see this point negative 1, 1, and then 1, 1. So x and negative x both have the same y. Okay. Remember, if a function has y-axis symmetry, we can call it an even function. All right, let's get into our increasing and decreasing intervals. Remember, we use the x's to talk about what the y's are doing as we move across our graph from left to right. So let's put our pencil on our furthest left point and move slowly to the right, and we should feel, okay, we're increasing here. Our y's are increasing as we start to move right or as our x's increase. So we should know from negative infinity until zero, we are increasing. Okay, we have that break in the graph where x is zero is excluded from our domain. So put your pencil back down on the next hypothetical point. And as we keep moving to the right, you see now our y's are decreasing. So from zero to infinity, we will say we have a decreasing interval. All right, so we said we were increasing and we use our x's, so from negative infinity until zero, close with parentheses. We always use parentheses for intervals of increasing, decreasing, even constant. Okay. And then there are no more intervals where we're increasing. So let's record our decreasing interval. So that's from zero 
until infinity. As we move from zero to infinity with our x's, our y's are decreasing. All right, finally, we have our asymptotes. So these asymptotes, our vertical one, x equals zero, our horizontal one, y equals zero, uh, those are the same as we had with the reciprocal. They help guide our graph. Um, and that's really all there is to, to the square of the reciprocal function for our volcano.